And here is a video response for a question that a student had about Physics 6A, Kinematics and Newtonian Mechanics. at least for this little section. So if we have this, right, let's rewrite what we have. I've got negative mg plus n cosine theta. These are all the components of different pieces, like right? gravity, normal force, don't forget friction. And we had them sum to the y forces in the y direction, but you know that goes to zero. That's how we started this problem, right? So the only thing left is I don't like this guy. I like to replace him, but you know there's an easy substitution for this. Because you know the force of friction is what? So the force of friction is some dumb constant, which they gave you, us, times the normal force. And we already have normal force, we just called it n. So all I've done here is substitute in for this guy. Because I'm limited on time, we'll just do the arithmetic really quickly. If I already do this, I can bring mg on the other side. I can clearly factor out the end, so why don't I do that? I'm going to pull n all the way out, pull him out of here, pull him out of here. I'll get this guy. I'm going to solve for n. Okay? And you're probably wondering, like, why do I arbitrarily pick n? Because he's going to be useful. Remember, he was the major player. He took into account gravity and this push. So let's write this out. And at least now I have the normal force. So let me catalog that too. So I have the normal force is So now I've got two facts. I have the acceleration, I have the normal force, right? Still going for that big force. But what have I done with this problem? First I figured out you're pushing everybody. Look at how everybody's moving. Then I figured out, well, look at this piece. Get a local attack on it because I'm not getting too much from the big attack. You see, sum of forces in the y direction, we agree, must be zero because it's not moving up or down. But what about in the x direction? If this guy's accelerating at this rate in the x direction, since these guys are stuck together, each piece has to accelerate at the same rate. So this a that we computed over here, that's not only for everybody, it's also for this piece. So maybe I can use that to get more info. So let's try this out. So now let's do sum of forces in the x direction. Okay? Focusing again on this body, what are the only forces going left and right? Well, gravity's not going to push you left and right. Everybody agree? So it looks like, again, this is why that normal force was key. So I'm going to put this back up here. But it looks like this block pushes on this block. So this block is pushing that block to the left. Okay? I don't want to include that in my force diagram, but I want you to think about it. This guy is pushing him to the left. But also look at friction. Friction is dragging this guy down, so a part of friction also pushes this guy to the left. And if we take these two together, then we're actually going to get the total sum of forces in the x direction. Okay. So let me work on that piece by piece. That was fun. Now let's get back to work. So again, since we're limited on time, let me blow this up so we can look at it. So first, it's this block pushing that block to the left. But what's the force is actually the force of contact between this guy and this guy? You know that's the normal force. So again, we're going to play off the normal force. But I don't want all of the normal force, right? I only want the component of the normal force that pushes this way. So from our previous picture, we already know that this angle is theta, right? Last time we got this side, which was adjacent, this was n cosine theta, to give me the y component. So now if I want the x component over this way, you guys can see this is opposite the angle theta, so this x component has to be n sine theta, right? So let's work with that. And again, I have to choose my coordinate system. I think we already agreed moving to the left was positive. So this is moving to the left is positive. I'll put in positive n sine theta. Almost some of this. The only thing left was our friction force, right? Okay. So if I blow this up, Again, I'm looking at the friction force. Let's get our angles back again. So here are our angles. Remember, this was mg, this was theta. This is our normal force over here. This is our theta again. I'm just redrawing the picture one more time. So I want this guy, but I want this guy's component that's going this way, right? 
So I want this guy to going straight across like this. We already saw this picture. This is straight across. This is straight down. You know the difference here is 90 degrees. That same argument as before. If this is theta and this is smiley, and theta plus smiley is 90 degrees, then again, smiley plus this angle is 90, so this 2 must be theta. So I'm going to work with the same theta. Again, I don't want the main guy force of friction. I want the guy that's adjacent to him. So this has got to be force of friction times cosine theta. So over here in the x direction. But it too is going to left, so this is positive for us. So they're going to work together. Force of friction times cosine theta. A little bit different because if you look at this thing, it doesn't sum to zero. Remember, the whole thing is accelerating to the left, right? with the acceleration of A, which we already computed. So this little piece that we're focusing on must also be accelerating at A. Right? So let's do this. Now we use Newton's second law. So Newton's left second law says sum of forces has got to be equal to MA. You only focus on the little mass, so we'll put them in there. The little mass times the acceleration. So now we have this. And this will pretty much give me what I want. I've got this piece of info and these two. Let's put them all together and see if we can solve for big F. So on this side, gosh, this is going to be a pain. So on this side, let's compute over here. This guy we took, found out was N US times the normal force for the force of friction. I have my cosine theta over here, right? I have my N here, sine theta. Add it over here. Then I have my MA over here. All I'm doing is plugging in. I'm going to take this one more step and factor out the end, just like we did before. So now we have MA is equal to I've done nothing. This is just arithmetic. I've just factored out this end. Nothing fancy going on here. Again, one more time. So I factor this out. Everything looks clean. You know theta. We'll figure out the normal force if we need to. You have mu s. Um, you definitely have the mass of the guy. The only thing is, where am I getting this f? So the only place we've actually seen f is in the acceleration. So let's plug that in. Maybe we can isolate f. So now I plug this in. I can try to isolate f. You know what to do. I'm going to multiply both sides by m plus n. Well, first let's divide by little m just to make life easy, okay? You've done all the hard work after this, or at this point, it's just arithmetic, but well, I'm trying to make it as clean as possible. So let's take this guy and rewrite him. So I have F over M plus M times, and while we're doing this, one it up. So we have something that looks like this. Over my baby M. No big deal. Obviously, you know, the next nice thing to do is multiply both sides by big M plus little m. So we'll get this. Again, last thing left for me to do is substitute, because I know what to do with M, right? That was the point of doing this. I shifted this over during the transition. And just plug in what we know. So if we plug in what we know, I get the final answer, which is my force should be mg over cosine theta minus mu s sine theta, right? times this term, sine theta, plus mu s cosine theta, times big M plus little m. So let me get this card out of the way so you can see this. Again, before I killed this, all I did was substitute in for the normal force. My bad, I forgot to put in our little friend. So if we put our little friend in here, on bottom, don't forget he's there. Then, to finish this, the M's are definitely going to cancel, right? Clean this up. This should match the final answer in your book. It should be something, if I wrote it this way, big M plus little M times, working on this guy, I'll just collect top and bottom together, sine of theta plus mu S cosine of theta over cosine of theta minus mu S sine of theta. I just wanted to put this up really quickly so you guys had something to look at. I'll come back and do a cleaner version where it's a little bit slow. So, good luck on your midterm. <sighs> that was a lot of work, but it's okay. You guys should take a break, because we are. Bye!